In any suburb of Damascus, like here in Jaramana, it wouldn't be difficult to see the effects of the war. Even if clashes did not take place here, the war has a way of hitting everywhere. Like the Mahyu family house, the man of the house, Ghassan or Abu Khalid, was an officer in the Syrian army till 2012, when he encountered a rebel sniper on the outskirts of the capital, an encounter that left Abu Khalid paralyzed. But long after the battle that Abu Khalid fought in ceased to make the news, his suffering continues. Life goes on. Despite the most difficult circumstances, whether it is death or injury, life has become much more difficult, and you feel isolated from the people, but you must try and get over it. Oh, how difficult it was becoming paralyzed. Hassan is one of nearly 800,000 that Syria's Ministry of Health says have permanent physical injuries because of the war. Behind each of these cases is a family struggling to survive. For Siham, a mother and a wife, the war could not have been more cruel to her. While she was in the hospital tending to her wounded husband, she got the news her youngest son, Karam, had been killed in a car bomb attack on the district where they live. They told me my two sons were injured in the explosion, but I didn't know that one was killed. The shock was immense, and I spent all my time between two hospitals, one where my husband is and the other where my children and then one of my sons died. I kept it from his injured father as he too was still in the hospital. Nothing is worse than losing a child. Siham now has to perform physical therapy for her wounded husband while keeping the household running. She and her husband, Ghassan, hope he might be able to walk again someday. But in the meantime, Ghassan watches the news every day, following up on what his former comrades are doing. He says he is ecstatic about recent army gains in Aleppo. But behind the headlines on Aleppo lies the stories of thousands of lives turned upside down by the conflict. The family you can see behind me is the family of Abu Said. It used to be a family of five, but in 2015, two of the sons were killed in an explosion. And the wife was also killed when Abu Said and his youngest daughter, Kuzama, were trying to flee eastern Aleppo. Now, his family of five is reduced to just two, himself, a man at the age of 54, and his four years old daughter, Kuzama. The story of Abu Said is one of many stories that you can hear in this makeshift shelter center that the Syrian government established for civilians fleeing eastern Aleppo. Many of them lost family members, and many of them lost their houses and everything they owned. A story like this can be heard in different places across Syria, a reminder of the heavy toll this war is taking on everyone. In the freezing cold of the night, Abu Said and his daughter, along with other displaced kids, gather around the fire to warm up. A burning tire is the only heat they have now. After all, they just escaped death in the fierce battles of Aleppo. I decided to leave eastern parts after my sons were killed in the fighting. I told my wife, pack our things, we'll all die if we stay here. The fighting is not leaving anyone alone. She didn't want to leave, she was afraid of snipers, but I told her this is our only chance. While we tried to flee, shells fell on us and she was killed and I injured. I carried her on my back for hours, hoping to save her, but it was too late. But what is left after losing everything you ever owned? Your limbs or your loved ones? And what drive could someone still have after all of this to go on living and fighting for a better future? All difficult questions that the majority of Syrians have to deal with nowadays. Allah Ibrahim, CGTN, Aleppo.